IESVE zone modeling with model it one. Okay, so we've already looked at how you can import geometry from Revit into IES um, using the GBXML um, export import option. But there might be occasions where um, you simply want to model geometry directly in IES. Now, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for very complex geometry um, or sort of large building projects. Um, I think you would find it quite frustrating, to be honest, compared with uh, the much better modeling tools available in Revit or Formit or SketchUp even. Um, but there might be occasions where you simply want to model a zone or a room um, and, and perform more of what more of what we call a kind of shoebox simulation where let's say for example if we look at the, um, the image on screen here let's say we were interested in this particular room in the in the building and we kind of we don't need to model the entire building we just want to model this room and let's say we want to um, look at the daylighting for example of this uh, room that would be one instance when you might decide just to model that directly in IES. Now, the other reason uh, that you might want to model in IES is simply if the import-export from Revit is just not working. And it's not uncommon, depending on how you've modeled in Revit, uh, for your imported GBXML file to have lots of problems. And um, as I've said before, um, sometimes in practice, in fact, um, our engineers would in fact just remodel the building in IES because I suppose they would then get a very clean zonal model which they know works. Um, and I suppose the thing to bear in mind is in terms of uh, a lot of energy modeling or thermal analysis, it's actually just very simple zonal geometry that you're interested in and you don't need the kind of complexity of a full BIM model. Having said that, there is a white paper out there which you can, uh, you can search for, I'll, I'll send it to you, um, which does actually give you recommendations about how you should model in Revit to uh, have a clean import into IES. Anyway, for today, for this video, we're just going to model this room here. So, help ourselves out, we'll stick a few dimensions on it. If you go to the Annotate tab, Aligned Dimension, then it's pretty easy in Revit, you just click on Items, drag, click, and um, just, just check what's highlighted to make sure you're uh, selecting the correct face that you're, you want. Pretty easy to just add some dimensions on there to a uh, to a room. We, we'll use that as a reference in IES, although you know, we'll just do it quite quickly. Okay, over to IES. So we need to start a new project. So top left, new project. Um, blank project in this case. Let's just call it um, <clears throat> test. Model one, okay, okay, there's our empty project. Um, at the moment we're set in London Heathrow, if you see that on the bottom here. We double click on that. weather we'll stick with the ASHRAE database um, okay ASHRAE fundamentals we don't need to change any of that okay just select our um, weather data set um, Finningley is the nearest weather data set to Sheffield 
So I've selected fittingly, slightly confusing that, but that's where the airport is. Um, and we're not using Apache SIM at the moment, but select the nearest to site for the uh, weather file. Okay, we're good to go. Um, you can uh, you can look at your weather data here. There are some graphs, so there are some yeah different ways of viewing your your weather data. You can get a sun path. All um all quite useful. Okay. Just check in the bottom left here that your location is Sheffield, which it is. Okay. Ready to start modeling. Um so got a few zoom navigation tools, fit view, zoom window, zoom in, zoom out, pan, you figure all that out yourself. We've got some different views here, plan, right, left, front, back, axonometric. Um, you can't model in the axonometric view, unfortunately, so stick to plan view for the time being. Um, okay. Little button here, grid settings. You can change your um, the dimensions of your grid. I'm going to change that to 0 0.1 of a meter. Okay. Um, so I've just changed that to 0 0.1. Uh, I think one meter is not really fine enough for modeling buildings. Um, okay. We've got some um, grid locks here. You can switch grid locks off or on. And under the locks dialog, you've got some different uh, locks or snaps, in other words, um, which again you can use. Um, often I just leave it in grid lock. Um, the, the benefit of snapping to grid is that you won't accidentally end up with um, walls or, or joins that don't quite meet. So it's often quite a good way of working. Okay. So let's just start drawing, so or modeling. If we come over to our toolbar here where we've got draw prism, draw extruded shape, draw sphere, hemisphere, so some different kind of primitives there. Let's just go back into Revit. So our building, our room, is five meters wide by 11.98, we'll call it. I'll just round that up slightly. Back into Revit, into IES, sorry. So let's use the draw prism and um, Reference, we can give this a, this a room name. So let's call this um, Seminar 1. Um, object, object type, at the moment we're only concerned with rooms. We'll look at the other ones in another video. So we'll leave that on room. The plane, so what height are you modeling the floor of your zone? Um, so we'll just leave that at zero for now, but um, obviously, if you were modeling it at a different level, you would change that. And the height of that zone, so really think of this as the ceiling level, the ceiling height. So I'm going to call that 3.2. And we don't need to select create inner volume at the moment, just leave that unchecked. Okay, then we're ready to start drawing. So I've snapped. There. I'm just scrolling with my um, mouse wheel here. Clicked there to create that room. And if we look at an axonometric view, you can see that we have created that room. Okay. We can go back into plan view. Now, 
Um, if you were simply interested with that one room, then you could simply stop there. You could leave it. Um, I'm just going to quickly model a few other rooms just so we've got the adjacent rooms, just to show you how to join rooms together. So um, when you're modeling zones in IES, think about the what you're modeling is the inner face of the exterior wall. So these walls here and here and here are exterior. And then in terms of partitions, you want to think of that, that um, line as the midpoint of that partition. So I'm going to click on Draw Prism again. I'll leave all of my settings as they are, but let's call this Seminar 2. Okay, and we'll snap to that corner there. And I'm just going to make this up for speed. A room there. Okay, let's have another one and we'll call it Seminar Room 3. Snap over here. Okay. And uh, you might notice there that I've missed that corner slightly. So we've um, we've not quite aligned that. We'll I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. And let's just complete here by drawing a sort of corridor up the middle. Let's call it corridor one. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so very very quickly there, we've um, we've drawn some some rooms. Let's look at that in axonometric. Okay, you can see where we've made a few errors here, and we'll we'll correct that in the next video. Um, but there's a basic set of geometry. Um, okay, let's move up to let's draw some rooms in the next level. So if we um, if we go back to draw prism, and let's call this uh, seminar four. But this time, we're going to set our plane height at three point six um, because we're on the level above. We'll zoom in a bit here and draw over there. Close that window. We look at that in axonometric. You can see that we have um, we have modeled those two spaces, two zones, one on top of each other. Um, if you try and model overlapping zones, IES will not let you do that. Okay, so that's just some very basic um, modeling. Um, if you want to have a look at that in a slightly different view you've got model viewer up at the top right and model viewer 2 if we click on model viewer um, then it brings you into this other way of viewing your models um, I don't I mean I don't really find it very useful to be honest I don't quite know why um, you would want to view like this um, but it is there. You also have Model Viewer 2. Which opens this rather strange environment. Um, I mean, I suppose it has a use in terms of just seeing what's solid and void. You can, you can change the materials. Um, but... You know, I, to be honest, I don't really know. I'm not quite sure who this is aimed at. Um, I, I, I don't find it that useful. Um, so anyway, you can play around with those if you want. Okay, so that was some um, basic um, modeling of zones. And we'll come back in another video. We'll look at a little bit of editing and how you can put windows in.